everyone, Pushing Up Roses here, and today we're finally looking at Rome, Pathway to Power, also known as Rome AD 92 in Europe. Way, way back when I was a Little Roses, I saw my brother playing this game in his room. I was enchanted. It looks like a strategy game, but often plays like an adventure game. It has these weird looking sprites with beady blue dots for eyes, people are running around naked, and it's set in Rome and you can do things! For whatever reason, I liked this game. Rather, I liked watching my brother play it. In fact, I liked watching my brother play a lot of computer games back in the day. It was like watching a live Let's Play, F-bombs and all. So when you run this game, it blatantly says Maxis on it. Now, now, don't jump the gun here. Maxis did not develop this game. It was developed by a company called First Light and published by Maxis. As you can see, this game uses an isometric interface, which was based on an engine called Microcosm, which also happens to be a really weird FMV game. Coincidence? Probably. Another game that uses the same isometric design and also developed by First Light is The Adventures of Robin Hood. Now, how do I explain this game? How do I find the words to tell you how much I simultaneously love and loathe this title? Because I do love it. I do. I'm not in denial. I like this game but it's absolutely awful. What we have here, folks, is a prime example of an awesome concept with decent graphics, including both artwork and animations, a great story, and some downright disgraceful programming and AI. You play as Hector. That's you, right there. You are a slave. The objective of the game is to make your way up the social ladder from plebeian to hero to eventually emperor. How do you do this? You steal someone's toga. Bam, no longer a slave. I'm serious, it works. The toga was so convincing, it changed my entire face. My friends didn't even recognize me. After you deliver a message to an important person in the Roman consul, you can buy a dagger and threaten people for money. Then you can buy shit, threaten the merchant you got it from, and get your money back. Normally I wouldn't be so hostile, but I had a good feeling about this lucky die. After a while, Mount Vesuvius starts to erupt, thus triggering the first major puzzle of the game. Getting on a boat so you don't get killed. If you take too much time, you get blanketed in lava, and also you apparently break your foot somewhere in the chaos. Poor Hector. Once you manage to get on a boat, you'll end up in Rome, where the next few chapters will focus on different objectives that move Hector closer to power. Hence the title, Rome, Pathway to Power. It's more than just a cobbled street, my friends. You have to do stuff and things to get to the top. This game is divided into six chapters, with two chapters involving strategy and action gameplay. Trust me, I'll dive into those chapters in a bit. The chapters in between involve going around Rome and doing things to boost your reputation. For example, chapter two involves warning Emperor Caesar that he's going to be assassinated. Now, don't even ask me how Hector found this out. When I eavesdropped on the guy I gave the message to in the first chapter, all I heard was mumble mumble rhubarb rumble mumble rhubarb rhubarb. So I don't know, maybe Hector the character heard something, but we the player didn't, so I had no idea what to do. It's just trial and error with some vague direction. One cannot simply walk into the Emperor's palace, however, you gotta bribe the guards with cold hard cash, and there's a few ways to do it. You can play dice and cheat with that lucky pair I showed you guys in the first chapter. Oh my god, what happened to this guy's hand? It's mangled! Or you can buy a slave and force him to fight to the death for money. Clearly, I'm going to win because I have a trident and a fishnet, and because my fighter's name is Lecherous. Once you're able to bribe the guards with the money you've made from gambling, you can warn Caesar of the Ides of March. He thanks you by sending you off to war. What a kind and generous emperor. Now let's get to the fun part, the strategy part. And I use the term strategy very loosely here because strategy implies doing something on purpose that will eventually work to get to your goal. This is more of a free-for-all. You are now the leader of the Roman army battling against the Britons. You can control each unit separately by clicking these buttons, or you can control everyone at once. As you can see, you get a lot of options here, but fuck them, they all suck. This AI is one of the worst I've ever seen. Your men are not going to listen to you under any circumstances. What the fuck is the point of a strategy level when you can't put together a strategy? All I have to do is get to the enemy's standard and take it. It's like capture the flag. I tried multiple methods and they all fell flat. At first I tried building a fort. Initially, after I told them all to start building, they ran around like confused ants. Then they started building in the wrong place. And then, I shit you not, they built a wall right in front of the bridge so I couldn't even move on. And don't even get me started on how to attack. When there's an enemy in the area and you tell them to attack, there's no telling what they might do. Most of them run away and sometimes they just shoot out in different directions. Let's attack, the everyone attack. Guys, what the fuck?
The best bet for beating this level for me was to just book it to the enemy's flag and not give a fuck about attacking. Though that can also be a challenge because I can't control what my own character does. I tell him to run and he'll stop to attack. I tell him to stop fucking attacking because he's about to get killed and he won't stop. Just go get the standard. Stop attacking when I'm not telling you to. Arrgh! However, nothing can compare to the legendary level five. Oh yes. In this level, you are in Egypt trying to protect Cleopatra. You get one unit of your own men and three units of Cleopatra's men who are absolutely horrible and not well equipped for battle. The objective is to simply kill all of the enemies which show up as little white dots on your map. This level is absolutely the worst. There is no set strategy here. You can tell your men what to do and it's up in the air on whether they'll do it or not. Here, look at this. Look at this! That's the enemy! For some reason, the enemy doesn't attack on sight most times, so they just sit there right in front of me. Okay, men, attack. Are you seeing this? Are you even seeing this? They're right there. I told them to attack and my men ran away. Who the crap programmed this? It's absurd. I died over and over and over again and when you die, Cleopatra commits suicide. Yep, that's totally what Cleopatra looked like, a white model. I've never won this level on purpose. It's always been sheer luck and fluke and I've only done it twice. The only strategic part about this level is finding ways to cope with the frustration of the broken AI. I don't understand. Attack the enemy. What is the point of all these commands if my men are just going to run all over the bloody map anyway? Look at this guy. I told him to attack and he ran all the way over there for no reason. God, it's like herding rapid lemurs. Now I got to go get him and bring him back to the rest of the unit. It's like a field trip where a few kids won't stay with the friggin' group. It's just atrocious and frustrating. Why do I like this game again? Do I like this game? When or if you beat level 5, Cleopatra will suddenly have blue skin and... Ahem. Thank you for your service. Really? Is this the same Cleopatra from the last screenshot? Hmm. Okay, so I'm aware this game has plenty of flaws. It's not the best game in the world and the battle system is broken, but the other parts can be legitimately enjoyable. One level involves running for Senate and you have to persuade people to vote for you, in which there's a lot of ways to do that. And another level allows you to hire an assassin to kill the corrupt people running Rome. I'm not sure if those things are enough to make up for the ridiculous strategy levels though. The game also has some peculiar little quirks. I do like the isometric design, but these backdrops are kind of scary. The gods are just basically looming over you in the sky, kind of creepy, but also kind of cool. Crazy, creepy, cool. The save system is also flawed, in my opinion. When you boot up the game, it asks you to start a save file by putting in your name or whatever name you prefer to go by. This is the only save file for your game, and if you want to save while you're playing, you have to save and quit. You can't save and continue, so every time I made some progress, I had to quit back to DOS, then restart the game to continue from where I left off. Every time. And I was doing that a lot in level 5, so it got old fast. Obviously, I'm a bit blinded by nostalgia here. It doesn't really matter how bad this game is because I remember it so fondly from my childhood. Nothing can really ruin it or shit on it, as the term goes. Even though, man, I sound really angry in the stream I did for my patrons last week. I, 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 I can't believe this. I, I, I'm floored right now. They just got in the fucking castle because they didn't attack. I can't, are you seeing this bullshit? Are you seeing this bullshit? Yeah, well, I have no explanation for my actions. I love hate this game. If this was a romantic comedy, it would be about me meeting a mediocre game that I fall in love with, but then I hate it. But then the hate fuels my love again, and it ends with us laughing about our confusing dynamic. Free script idea for all you movie writer hopefuls out there. You're welcome. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my review on Rome Pathway to Power, aka Roses Yells at Some Stuff. If you're interested in more DOS game reviews, well my friends, I have those in droves. Click on the right annotation for a review on Moonshine Racers, and on the left we have a review of Life and Death. You can also follow me on all my social networks, and if you want to support this channel, you can pledge to my Patreon campaign. Mama needs a new bag of sunflower seeds for her parrot! Thanks again, and see you guys in the next one.